In this video segment for the Dutch Cottage Design Project, we're going to look at roof options, and specifically we're going to look at a compound curve Dutch gable roof that you can see over the garage here. In the previous video segments, we had built both the main floor plan and the foundation, and in this version, let's go ahead and create our build for the roof. You can see different roof options you can create using with the program on the main roof panel. What I want to do is let's go ahead and turn on automatic rebuild roofs when we make changes in here we can see what's going to happen. A lot of times when you build a roof you may want to create what's called an energy heel. That is in the roof height here raised from the ceiling. If you set your rafter directly on your top plate you may not get enough insulation value out of that. So you may want to change that value. Um, a common value might be 12 inches, one foot to raise that up. Options for the roof, there are lots of different options if you want to create uh, the style of your eaves, if you want to supply gutters, ridge vents. Also, if you take a look at the structure, you can control exactly how it's going to get framed with the rafter members. We're going to later in a video, we'll look at stick framing and truss framing. Rafter tails, ridge caps, freeze board, shadow boards, so you can add profiles for these by simply browsing into the library and finding different profiles for those items. So let me go ahead and close this and create just a basic roof that's an 8 and 12 pitch and when the automatic roof comes on you can see what it looks like. Now if you rebuild the roof that's an 8 and 12 let's suppose you want to go 3 and 12. It's a quick way to visualize the impact of that roof. Let's go ahead and change that back to 8 and 12. It will also give you your different materials when you do that. Let's rotate around and make a few changes in the roof. Let's select this end wall here. Press the tab key, toggle the wall to a gable. And we'll just rotate around to this side. We'll do the same thing. Tab to get the wall selected. Toggle the roof to a gable. Now on the back side of the house, Let's suppose you want to have a gable roof back here, but this is one long wall and if you simply select that wall, it's going to look kind of crazy, and you toggle it to a gable wall, it's not going to generate what you might want in the field. Let's go ahead and put that back to a hip roof. To make that change, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Let's split our screen here by Shift F6 on the keyboard and we'll zoom in to where this wall is. One of the ways is to use what's called a roof gable line. And you can simply just draw a line where you want to generate that gable. So if I just come in here and draw a roof gable line so that it comes in that area, it will generate the kind of roof that I want. Let me go ahead and undo that and I'll show you another way to do it. And one way is just like we did in our foundation earlier is to break that wall. Once the wall is selected, choose the Break tool out of your menu in the top. Come over here and click on that wall to create two different wall segments. Now you can highlight that wall and toggle it to be a full gable and you will get the same exact result. The next style of roof we want to create is a Dutch gable. And I actually want to create a compound Dutch gable that you see on your screen. Let's go through the steps to create this by simply selecting the gable wall that we have up front. Let's toggle that back to a hip wall. And then I want to change the two walls by selecting them. I'm going to hold the shift key down. So I have these two walls selected. Let's go ahead and open up these walls. We'll just go ahead and grab the uh, front wall as well. Let's open up these walls and on the roof panel, what I want to do is mark an upper pitch to this. And we'll just use 6 and 12. And what we're going to do is you can either change it to start at a certain height, which would be an elevation, or you can go in from the baseline or in from the wall. Now let's go ahead and just set this to be 36 inches from that baseline. And once you make that change, you get more of a Mansfield style of roof. Now to create our Dutch gable roof, I'm going to manually edit these roof planes. And when I start to manually edit these roof planes, it's going to prompt us to turn off the automatic roofs. So to begin with, 
let's go ahead and um, I'm just going to delete this little roof plane in here. And we'll turn off the automatic roofs. So now we have a gap in there. The next thing I want to do is we'll just pull this out and snap that to the other roof plane. And we'll do the same exact operation on the roof on the right hand side. The gap that we have up in the attic needs to be filled in. We'll use an attic wall to do that. On the floor plan view, go up into the attic, press F9 on the keyboard, which will give you a reference display layer from the floor below. Use your exterior wall tool, and I'm just going to come in here and drag out a wall across there. It's going to indicate, do you really want to draw a wall on that level? We'll go ahead and say OK. And when you open up this wall, let's go ahead and change a couple of the attributes. One, I want to select it as an e-wall. That's going to force the build to indicate that it has a fascia on it. And then we'll also have it marked as an attic wall. That will cut it. We're still going to have a gap in between there because I've scooted that wall back. It's difficult to see, but we have a gap right in this area. And we will correct that with an additional roof plane when, we're, when we get close to finishing it up. Next step on this roof is to curve the roof planes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the two roof planes on top and I'm going to mark them as the curved roof. And then I'm going to mark that at the ridge it's zero degrees so that will be flat. Press the tab key and then at the eave it's going to indicate what that pitch or that degree is. I'm going to highlight that and copy it because I'm going to use it in the lower roof planes. Once we close the dialog box, you can see the upper portion of that roof curves. And I'm going to select the lower portions of the roof, these three different sections. And we'll also curve that. And at the ridge, what I want to do is paste that value in that we had from above. Once we close that dialog, you can see the impact of that. It's going to give us a compound curve, and it's going to match exactly because we copied those values in. Now what I need to do here, let's toggle on our glass house view and you can see what's going on. That roof plane is actually not joined in correctly because we have our automatic roofs off and when you're doing curved roofs, the automatic roof tools will not work. So let's go back into our regular view. Let's just select this. I'm going to pull this roof plane back if I can do this in 3D. It's a lot easier actually to do it in 2D if you can get the right handles on here. I'm just going to pull these back so that I can use the join roof tool. And I'm going to switch over to the 2D view. It'll be a little easier for me to grab these roof planes. On this roof plane right here, I'm going to select this edge. And while it's selected, in the lower left hand corner of your menu is join roof planes. It's also the number two on your keyboard. Select that. I'm going to select the edge that I wanted to join on. And that's going to create and merge those two roof planes exactly so I don't have to figure it out myself. So again, I'm just going to do that on this side. And in the 2D view, you can see that those roof planes look accurate. We'll just do the exact same operation on this side. We'll click on the edge we want to join and use the join tool. Click on the edge that I want. And then finally, we'll just select this edge and do the exact same thing. Again, you could use number two on your keyboard and get that down. So now you can see in the 2D view that it has a nice join to the main roof plane and no extra roofing materials. Now this spot that we have up here needs to be filled in and that's because we moved the attic wall. If we turn on our reference display, you can see that attic wall. And what I'm going to do is just draw another roof plane in here to fill that in. So I'm going to use a manual roof plane here. Select the roof plane. I'm going to slide from edge to edge by holding the left mouse key down, move up and click the left mouse key one more time. Fills it in. And let's change the pitch of that roof. May have to press the tab key to grab that, or let's just grab it in this view. I'm going to change the pitch of that. And we'll just set it to be 3 and 12. And then what I'm going to do is simply come in here. We'll just zoom in. And I'm going to grab that roof plane. And we'll just pull that back at a 45 degree angle. And I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. Let's slide over, 
pull that over to be a 45 degree and maybe zoom in and try to be a little bit more accurate than the way we just kind of drew it there and snap that into place. Zoom out and let's maximize our view. So I've created the compound curved roof and filled in this little area right in here by using the manual tools, the curve tools. Remember when I curved the upper portion of this section of the roof, I opened it up and I copied in this value of the eave here and I pasted that in the lower section at the ridge is the same value. So that's a nice smooth tie-in to the two roof planes. Next up in the video series, we'll be creating a custom ceiling plane, much like the custom roof planes inside of the house.